all in my business. Uh, you be all in your feelings. Uh, I've been all in them trenches. Uh, I've been all in my Hey guys, I'm Sai and welcome to Ace Podcast Nation, the home of our wrestling series, Keeping It Real. You can watch this show on youtube.com slash Ace Podcast Nation. Please subscribe, click the bell for notifications. And of course, you can download the audio versions of this show and all the other shows we do on Ace Podcast Nation at your favourite podcast platform. They're everywhere. But uh, if you want to keep it purely wrestling on the socials, follow at Keeping It Real with uh, two A's in real and an underscore at the end on uh, Twitter. We tend to just post the shows and some some takes. Most of the takes are fiend-related at the moment. But there we go. We'll talk about that shit in a minute. But, uh, yeah, we're going to talk some WrestleMania. And uh, it was a good weekend of wrestling. And uh, joining me as ever to discuss this is the man himself. He is post-wrestling writer and interviewer. YouTube extraordinaire, it's Andrew Goats Thompson. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. How are you, my friend? What's up, Sal? How are you doing, uh, my my good brother? How you feeling? I'm good, mate. I'm good. I um, the build up to WrestleMania this year was in. It's not an exaggeration to say that it was, it was utter, dog, utter dog shit. <laughs> but, but, I thought over the two nights. There was more good stuff than bad stuff. Um, like we're not going to break it down piece by piece, but we'll fly through it. Yeah, we, 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 we can talk about um, yeah, we can talk about all the matches on the card. Yeah, but just, yeah. I did, real, real, real quick before we get into uh, before we get into WrestleMania, something real important that I did want to talk. I meant to uh, mention it before we got on air, but it's something that I, I just like literally saw on uh, Twitter, so I need to bring this up. Uh, I don't know if you saw it. Uh, but an, another black man got killed by the police in uh, Minnesota while the George Floyd trial is going on, literally in the same state. Um, and he got killed by a cop during the traffic stop. Um, and I like I, it's, his name was um, Dante Wright. And it, it's kind of crazy because like I, I, I could see these videos and I could like watch these videos straight through and like feel like completely numb because mm. I've seen so many of them. And it's like it doesn't like set in until like maybe like 15 or 20 minutes later, like what I, I just watched somebody yeah. killed. Like, they, like they, this shit is like really crazy. And like seeing all these, like seeing this family, you know, have to do these press conferences and stuff like that. You, even though they're getting, you know, getting the word out about what happened, but still having to come to the realization that one of their own, their son, boyfriend, you know, whatever it may be, nephew, cousin got mm-hmm. killed by a cop for for no reason other than a traffic stop. And I, when I seen the video, the cop was like, he hit him, his, par, his partner was on the other side of the street and he was like, oh my God, I just shot him. And then he was like, really? And I was like, what the fuck you mean really? Yeah, he just he just killed him. And then like, the, the it, it's just really fucked up to see how like really in, literally in the middle of the George Floyd trial when you're, when it shouldn't even be a trial when this dude yeah. clearly kill george floyd on camera like I, I don't i don't get why there's this long drawn out them trying to you know pr- pr- present any other idea for this dude other than the fact mm. that he's a murderer which he is they trying to cover his ass that's what the police force does for each other but the thing that's killing me about this um th- this recent situation with dante right is the fact that they are claiming that he it was a it was a um it would I can't remember the exact verbiage, but basically they're saying that he didn't mean to pull out his gun. He meant to pull out his taser. And I was like, that's I was like, that's some bullshit because number one, well, she meant to pull out her ta- her, her gun. I mean, she meant to pull out her taser and pull out her gun. And I'm like, that's bullshit because they apparently she's been on the force for quite some time. And you're telling me you don't know what the fuck your taser looks like versus what your gun yeah. is. I'm pretty I'm 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 like ninety nine percent sure, hundred percent sure a gun is way fucking heavier than a taser. I was gonna so, say on they completely so, different fucking weights. That, that, that's what I'm saying. So like and that, that that's just bullshit right there. Cause they they clear that's what we we've seen time and time again over the past, I don't know how many years, is that cops consistently cover up for each other when one of them does this shit to black people. Like it's it's mm. it's, it's fucking sad to see. And it happens very often and I, it, it makes me wonder how many times this has happened like before body cams and stuff yeah and before they, social it, media yeah, and, and they just and it just got completely 
washed under the rug because you know the cops is just my my word versus a person who's not alive anymore. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I'm, I'm tired of seeing this shit. It's like it never stops. I feel like I, I like well, sometimes I don't even feel like I can just like tweet anything. I just retweet stuff because it's like I'm just saying the same shit over and over again, and I'm like repeating the same thing that people have already said already. Mm-hmm. Like it's like we're tired of seeing this shit. Like and it's like it's just never ending cycle. Like we're lit. Like we're literally in like there's literally a trial right now and people are fighting to convict someone who killed somebody on camera Mm -hmm. literally and they're trying to find every loophole or george floyd had issues he had a whatever problem whatever they trying to say like dude there is literally video footage of this man taking this man's life this should be no trial this should be nothing the only trial that should be held is to put him and put his ass in fucking jail for for life like this should be nothing else than this and then the dude who, who who shot jacob blake and paralyzed him last year the cop who shot jacob blake and paralyzed him last year this motherfucker's back on the police force already like no no, no serious no bullshit he's back on the police force like literally got his job back i'm telling you bro like it's 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 fucked up i'm telling you like it's really 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 fucked up and then the thing is that the, the, like the most crazy i remember when um when the Capitol got stormed by the the you know by the I guess you call them all Trump supporters or whatever like that. Mm. Uh, they, you remember how it took so long to to like get security and stuff up there, yeah, bro. Yeah. This man killed uh, Dante Wright, and they had barricades and everything within like you know so quickly. Everything was you know to prevent people mm. from you know basically fucking the city up or fucking you know whatever area that this happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah that this happened in. So it, it it's just really like annoying as hell, and it's like it's draining, bro. Like I'm tired. It's like I like I I, I be wanting to say stuff, but like I feel like I'm just like fucking repeating myself, and I'm just saying the same shit. And like it's like I I just retweet the voices that need to be heard, and like you know retweeting mm. you know videos of his family speaking out publicly about it because that's what's important. But like I feel like I'm just like revolving door, like just saying the same shit every four months. Like I'm tired of seeing it, bro, and I'm I shouldn't be numb to seeing somebody. That, any somebody that looks like me or anybody for that fact getting fucking killed on camera like it's yeah. not that's not healthy that's not a something to be proud of or a good thing in the slightest like it's it's it's, it's kind of fucking sad to be honest with you it is sad mate it's um what gets me and like obviously we're very removed from it in the uk because you know we just see what's on the news or what you see on social media and stuff and like the thing which always gets me is like the complete lack of regard for another human being's life. Like you just killed someone over a fucking traffic stop, which most likely was just a fucking, just a routine bullshit thing. So why the fucking hell are the police so quick to, to just kill someone just because they can? I don't know. I, I fucking I just... I hate it and it makes me it makes me like sad for the where we're going to be in the future because it's 2021 and like you say this like it's like it's on like a rinse and repeat every few months some other police force is just doing the same thing or even sometimes the same police forces doing the same thing killing more people like I can't even imagine what it's like for you and people living in the States because I think I said to you before, like I can't even imagine like the anxiety and stuff that like they people, just got the, c- yeah, coming just, coming just into a to coming, shop, mate. Right. Just, do you know what I mean? Well, like well, I was I yeah. think I said to you off I can't remember if I said it off air or on air. Um but like just go into the shop or something and it's cold and you put your hood up and you go and go and pick up some milk or some shit and before you know it like you've got a load of police officers like giving you shit asking you where you're going what you're doing and like that shit can escalate so quickly as has been proven over the last god knows how many years and what's even more depressing about it is there's some portion of America or the world or whatever who don't really seem to give a shit like they're okay with it just keep happening and don't seem to want to make a change like you say there's a guy 
murdering someone on video like why surely the the trial should be is the video real yeah okay there you go you're go to jail do you know what i mean this i i, I fuck. makes me yeah, yeah makes bro, me it, sad, it, it, it's, it's wild because i know so many black people that get like really bad anxiety when they get around cops just mm -hmm. for the you know what i'm saying like even when like when people are driving you yeah, know what yeah. i'm saying like if i am around the cop and you know i, I you know you get you get a little little nervous you know what i'm saying because you just you, you you just never know bro like mm -hmm. you li you literally just never know like any day it could be that wrong that wrong cop that you run into or that you know what i'm saying because but i'm brother police force is fucked up like it's like literally fucked up it's corrupt like it really is, oh, the shit, is the shit is pathetic like like i said before like we are quite removed from it in the uk in terms of on a, like a like seeing it on the news and stuff like you will see it if there's like a sort of if it's being widely reported around the world but you you won't see every instance that happens in america because obviously there's news and stuff going on in the uk but what you do see and what i see all the time on facebook is police stopping people of all races on like traffic stops and all these different things over real petty fucking shit and you just see it all the time and, they, and this nine times out of the ten the police officers they don't like it if they're sort of the person in the car sort of asks like what's going on why are you stopping me but the difference is when the like the white guys or women who are asked when they ask those questions they have the the comfortability or whatever you want to say of being able to say like why are you why have you stopped me why are you doing this without fear of getting shot like the worst thing that's going to happen to them is they'll probably just get arrested whereas you've got black guys and black women they're petrified as soon as those like they're pulled over by the police or they're stopped that like a you know like the things they set the traffic stops they set up like you see so many of them their anxiety levels are so high that as soon as they've they've almost almost like not even turned their car off and put the handbrake on or whatever but well, they get scared to get out the fucking yeah. car they don't want to get, out, get the out the car they don't want they don't want to they don't want to move their hands and like i've seen a few where like where the police officer will say like get your papers or whatever from and they'll say it's in the glove box they and, the people, and the people the people will say no i can't you need to get it because they think that any slight movement and this fucking dickhead cop's gonna just start shooting and ask and that's the problem isn't it it's like it shoot first and then go oh i just shot a guy oh he was getting the papers that i asked him to get and that's the thing is half the time they're doing death deck they're complying if you like or they're they're following the instructions that the police officers are given whether it's put your hands behind your back or whatever what have you got in your hands throw it to the side or get you something from the glove box or i just i, I honestly mate um but like, like they have they have literally traumatized black people to the point where we are even scared to get out of the fucking car doing a traffic stop because they think that's that shit is just like what well, yeah, like, they what, think it's like aggressive. what 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 what's your one it's like once you get out of the car like it's over mm -hmm. like you 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 know shit going left once you get out of the car so that's why black people get so scared to even get out the fucking car and yeah. when they tell you like oh you need to put your hands on the I'm, I'm not moving my fucking hands i'm yeah. not my hands gonna be right here on the wheel so where you can see them and, and the shit that kills me is these motherfuckers literally sit there with a hand on the trigger literally yeah no no there's no no threat there's no. no threat they would literally sit there gun pointed at somebody's face black person's face with the hand on the trigger like yeah. the the, the, the most the mo one of the crazier videos that i recently seen this recently happened they pulled over a vet a vet is a black man yeah. he's a vet he's a veteran he was he was dressed in his um in his uniform and the cops they pepper sprayed him because he wouldn't get out of the car he was like like you could tell he was scared bro He's like, I yeah. don't want to. I don't want to like fucking get out of the car. He was like, I'm just look. Y'all can come open the door. I'm gonna put my hands on the wheel, and you come open the door and you get me out of the car. And they kept telling him, you gotta get out the car. You gotta. Get out. And bro, I'm like, he like he's fucking terrified right now. He don't want to get out of the car, not because he's trying to disobey you, motherfuckers. He because you got your fucking yeah. gun pointed at him with your hand on the trigger. That's why he don't want to get out the car. Maybe maybe if you actually listen to him and say, hey, I will get out the car if you come open this door. Yeah. I'm not about to reach down there. And then you have some That's fucking it, yeah. excuse talking about, oh yeah, he was reaching for something. I got scared. 
why you already got your hand on the fucking trigger. You know what I'm saying? It's oh, yeah. it's ridiculous, bro. Yeah, it's scary, mate. And it's um, <clears throat> like, like, as you know, I'm father of three, mate. And like, I can't imagine. I could, like, when I was little, I used to like think, oh, it'd be amazing to live in America and stuff like that. I like, mm. no disrespect now, but like, I look at, I don't particularly like living in Britain, by the way, but <laughs> I, I no longer want to move to the States. Um, and that's a big portion of it is just like how killing people of color and stuff is just, the police seem to be able to just do it for, when they feel like, and then they're, they're, uh, their teammates, their partners, whatever, they just, their, their employers, they just cover it up and away we go. They'll be back on the, you know, they'll they'll have a short suspension and then they're back on the job a couple of months later while those families have got to deal with the the anguish of losing a loved one for the next, well, for the rest of their life. And it just, it's fucked up, mate. I don't like it at all. And um, like I say, I don't like it. And like, I'm a, white guy living in the UK do you know what I mean so I can't even imagine what it's like to be living in the States and having to live with it on a daily basis and have to like think about like what you're like think about how not just like what you're doing and what you're saying and stuff like that but like how is this other person going to interpret what I'm doing do you know what I mean you like you'd have to like almost triple guessing like what you're doing like every slight movement at, at what should be just a routine traffic stop and i don't really understand traffic stops to be honest because for me like in the uk unless the police is looking for a specific vehicle or you're speeding or you're driving like erratically as if you've been drinking or something generally you don't get stopped but in America, uh -huh. they do seem to stop you for just routine or just to whatever, you know, just for any reason. It doesn't seem to, there doesn't seem to be a reason at some, a lot of the time. And it's, I find that a bit confusing. But I don't bro, know. like, I, I, I'm not, like, I, I don't, I don't never see none of these fucking videos happen to white people, bro. I, I like genuinely, like, I, I don't, I mean, I'm pretty well, sure it happens, but like, I don't, I never see the shit. Like, I'm always seeing this shit happen to black people. I'm trying to figure out, like, what the, like, I mean, I already know what's going on. It ain't even a question, but the, the system is fucking corrupt, and it, it's 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 obvious as hell. But yeah, I I, I'm, I just had to say that, and you know, had a yeah, discussion. Man. I appreciate you being open. So yeah, that was uh, I had it's to so good, I had man. to get that out because this, this shit, like you said, it's it's like rinse and repeat, like every four months, every three months, like it's like the same exact shit every yeah. time, and it never changes, like. It's, it's fucking ridiculous. Like we we even started all twenty twenty one with fucking Trump supporters fucking breaking into the fucking Capitol building, and no one got shot today. One Somebody person, got what? One person one got person. killed. One person got killed. Jesus fucking Christ! Mm -hmm. Shit is and ridiculous, man. Just to finish off on that, mate. I just want to say when you said like you haven't seen like white people getting stopped. I've seen some videos on Facebook of white people getting stopped, but that's what I was saying. What you see with the, the videos, which. Are, I see on like Facebook and YouTube and stuff like that about that like uh, with the white people getting stopped it's about them the videos are like directed at telling people how to question why they're being detained and Shit. why they're being stopped <laughs> and all that shit <laughs> but like the people of color and black people and stuff like that they they they, they haven't got that that so don't work like that don't work like that you know what I mean? can you imagine if like you got stopped at a traffic stop and you started saying stuff like, why am I being detained? Or, you know, what's your reason for stopping me and shit? You'd be fucking... Jesus, I, I, I hate to think what would happen to you, mate. This... It's fucked up, mate. I really... I, it gets me down. It, it, I find it really distressing. And, like... It's so like I say, I can't imagine what it's like for you. Mm. Yeah, it's ridiculous, man. But we could transition over to, um... To Mania... Indeed, the uh, night one, the first match, um, Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre. We were, we both said we hoped Bobby uh, Bobby Lashley won, but we thought that they might go with Drew to give him the the win in front of the fans, which he didn't get last year. They didn't. They went with uh, with Bobby Lashley, 
Um, and just before I get your views on the match, mate, I want to just say it looks like they're adding uh, Mace and T-Bar to MVP in some way, going by the end of Raw on, on Monday. Fuck. That's all I can say about that. I just, that just blows my mind. Look, don't get me wrong. If they take the masks off the two of them, put them in a suit and align them with Bobby and, and MVP, I'm sure that Dijakovic and Dio Madden will be excellent because I think they're a really good tag team and stuff. But you can't tell me that they'll be, certainly in the short term, as good as the Hurt Business was as a group. So yeah. to break up the Hurt Business and then bring in those two is puzzling to me. But sorry, go on. You give me your views on the match and also on that at the end, if you want. No, no, no. You, I was gonna follow on what you said. I like. I, I was saying the same thing that pretty much, or thinking the same thing that everybody else is thinking. Like, why the fuck would you break up the Hurt Business? Like, what was the point? It's like no point. Like, it's like mm-hmm. they broke up the Hurt Business for no reason. Because like we, we literally. Did they break them up just for one night, mate? Do you think? Like, just for the sake of one night. I mean, like they broke them up for WrestleMania, and now they want him to have a stable again. So now they've decided they're gonna go with those two. No, I, I I mean break up the original her business. That's yeah, what I that's mean. what like, I mean. Yeah. Like I I I don't I, I never I mean this even this whole way I I never saw the point in them splitting. Like I I guess they assumed that 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 would get more heat on Lashley because because I, I guess they I'm like, bro, like I, I mean it, it it just didn't make any sense. But I, I'm I'm glad that Lashley um retained. And I I think it's good that I, I was I was like genuinely shocked that they like that 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 shocked the shit out of me. That that might have been the shock of the night. To be honest with you, like when I saw that he retained, I, I 100% thought that they were going to try to give Drew McIntyre his moment uh, in front of crowds, but they, they they went with Lashley, man. So I'm 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 glad to see Lashley still got the title. Yeah, me but, too. But, but, but the whole but the whole um, the, the whole uh, Mason T bar with him and uh, MVP that that shit like makes no sense, bro. Please, what like to just bring back Sheldon and Cedric, bro. Just come come yeah. on, man. Like stop like with this. The, uh, the, you you want to know what I want? Mace can keep his look. I want Dodger Kobe to just be Dodger Kobe. That's what I want. I want him to just be yeah. Dodger Kobe. He that he was in NXT. That's what I want. Him and this T bar shit. Like okay, I, it, it was good, but retribution is done. Let's get me and Yim in the women's division. Let's get Mustafa Ali back his old theme song. Have him compete for a fucking U.S. title. Him, I'm sure him versus Sheamus would be fucking great. Like please, and, and you know what? Slapjack, Slapjack, and stay Slapjack. Cause I like Slapjack. Yeah. Even though he don't do shit, I just like the name Slapjack because it's <laughs> fucking stupid. Like, I, I like Slapjack, so yeah. But I, I I don't know what the hell they do. I know McIntyre and Lashley having a rematch at the WrestleMania Backlash. And by the way, they they faced each other on Backlash last year. Yeah, which is which interesting. is full story. And and you wanna know what? Bobby Lashley should win, and that's all I got to say. Damn straight, you should. Um. So here's a question for you, mate. Um. <clears throat> why didn't they do anything new like they didn't really feel like they started any new feuds set up any new contenders or anything after Wrestlemania do you think that's just uh, get backlash out of the way and then they'll move on to new things because oh, what was the question very, again? like why have they, they normally after Wrestlemania you get some new feuds some mm-hmm. new an injection of new talent it just feels like the start this felt very uh very samey the raw after mania the the you know the the lashley versus mcintyre again the even the 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 the, the, the bout that they did to to find out who was going to face bobby lashley who, who was it it was randy orton uh drew mcintyre and someone else but like it was very kind of the same and i just i don't know it's um, fr- I find it frustrating because I look at the talent that they have available, and I think, God, oh, you could make such a fresh, fresh TV, and you could make some real fresh feuds. You got fucking Ricochet on main event, and Mustafa Ali is on TV one week and off the next week. It's I find it f- incredibly frustrating. Um, but yeah, there we go. And on tag teams, let's. Uh, the next match in on night one was the the female tag team turmoil match it was the drizzling shits 
was not good. Um, <laughs> I wondered whether they'd go with the story of Lana getting the WrestleMania win in front of the fans versus Nia, or maybe they would set up Carmella and Billy Kay as like a, a new tag team. Why the fuck Billy Kay is in a tag team when Peyton Royce is not even on TV? Uh, it astounds me. Um, they they could have gone with the Riot Squad, and I thought they were mm. about halfway through the match, and instead they've gone with nice ringtone, Tamina, and that's my alarm. Uh, <laughs> they've gone through. Uh, um, they've gone to uh, yeah, Tamina and Natalia picked up the win. What did you think of the match? What did you think of the choice of Tamina and Natalia? I, I I genuinely thought that Ruby and Liv should win. Like, bro, what 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 is up with WWE not liking tag teams? Like, what what like what the hell is going on? Like, they they yeah. it, it, it's it's like they prefer the makeshift tag teams over the legitimate tag teams. Yeah. I'm like Ruby and Liv are literally a good tag team. Everybody yeah. likes everybody likes Ruby Ryan and Liv more. So who does, who does like yeah, who, who like who, who doesn't like who doesn't like them? And like they got a good look. They can wrestle, of course. Or else they wouldn't fucking be there. If they couldn't. They they can wrestle. They're entertaining. They got character. Like yeah. But you should have just went with Ruby and Liv, but they went with Natalia and Tamina. But like as we said off air, I mean, the Tamina did have a good performance on night two. She had she a lot did, of people yeah. on her side, so you know, kudos to me. I'm glad she got her moment. She been—I don't know how long she been in WWE, bro. She done been yeah, through it all. Forever. She done seen it all. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad she got to have her um, her mania moment. But I, I definitely think they should have went with Liv and uh, Ruby. Yeah, on the tag team note as well. Now that Lana and Naomi are wearing oh, the same, ta- yeah, they, ta- now they've got matching gear. No, real quick, they're, real quick, they're bro. Split them real up. quick. Real quick, I was about to say, I ain't mean to cut you off, but real quick. Did did you hear that reaction for Naomi? Yeah. It's good, wasn't it? And that's what that's the point, is you got people like Naomi, Cesaro, the Fiend, um, there was a couple of others. Like there was all these all these people who they just will not fully get behind. They're the ones getting the biggest pops. So it's like you gotta do something with these people instead of just constantly burying them and, and screwing them over with their own ineptitudes of and their own booking problems and they need to get out of their own way and let these people shine and let the right people shine because people are fed up of seeing the same people in the same positions they want to see the talent that is good enough that, but for some reason one person thinks they haven't got something whatever it may be and I was just saying then, Lana and Naomi, now that they've got matching gear and have become a proper tag team, they'll probably get split up. Whereas <laughs> they'll keep together Biddy Kay and Carmella. And they it's just ludicrous. Like, oh, infuriating. Like, the fact that Peyton Royce is off TV and Biddy Kay is now in a tag team with Carmella, that is mind-boggling. Fucking mind boggling because uh, you, you the iconic... Naomi has said on the interview that she she wanted to turn heel. She recently said that. No, uh, she's turned on Lana. Hundred <laughs> uh, percent. Next up was my favorite match of the weekend. Um, absolute banger was uh, Seth Seth Rollins and Cesaro. Cesaro getting those big pops. Big pops. But, um, it was awesome. Uh, I really enjoyed the match. Really enjoyed the finish as well. I we're, really we're, liked that. We're quick. Um, I was, say, I was about to say real quick, Sai. They need to start. I, I need you to endorse this. They need to start reading the fucking news updates because I had a, po- a portion in there from two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, Sai. I want you. To, matter of fact, let me pull this up because I. You know what? Two I'm weeks a, ago. T- two weeks. I want you to. I want you to. I want you to. I want you to hit me out on this. Two weeks ago, bro. I had this in the news update. People need to start reading a news update. Damn straight they do. I'm 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 the I'm, I'm gonna say this. I, I don't boast I don't boost about myself, but I will do it this time. I am the fucking man at wrestling news writing. I will say that. The king of the news beat, mate. But I but let, let, let me let me just find this. I'm pulling it up. That, that's that's why I'm 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 talking so much because I'm trying talk, to talk, I'm trying talk, to, talk, talk, I'm trying, talk. <laughs> I'm trying to find the fucking uh here we go. Let me see. Let me pull it up because it's a lot of stuff in here. All right, I'm halfway to it. I'm halfway to it, and where's this thing? Where's this thing? 
Andy Thompson, this thing. the king of filling, the king of filling. Uh, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying, I'm trying to fucking find this thing right now. Uh, but, but, but basically, um, Seth Rollins had did an interview with Bleacher Report, right? Mm. And one of the things that really uh, stood out during the interview was dude was like, um, he, he he was talking about how you know he had a new um, a new theme song coming yeah. right and i had that in the news update two fucking weeks before it happened he was like he, he didn't necessarily confirm that it was but he was like i got i might have a new theme song in the work so people might want to watch out y'all motherfuckers need to start reading the news update because i got everything in there some of these sites post like three weeks three weeks or three days later yeah so they gonna stop this they gonna put some respect on my name side si. And, and they never, and they up. never, and they never credit you either. After no, 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 they, 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 they do, they yeah. do, they do, they do. Yeah. But you know what, bro? I must have respect on my. I'm talking my shit this week. I'm talking not about uh, shit. Uh, Three uh, weeks uh, ago, uh, uh, humble Drew is on break this week. Yes, indeed. <laughs> they um. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to say, um, about Bobby Lashley. They um, their plan to get him booed by breaking up the herd business resulted in him getting cheered when he came out. Mm-hmm. Getting cheered mm-hmm. during the match, and getting cheered when he won. So, tell me again why you had to break up one of the high points of your whole, like all of your TV. Fucking useless. Twice. It's good shit. It's good shit, pal. <laughs> Motherfucking. But yeah, um, I really like, by the way, uh, Cesaro's airplane spin finish with the. It's like a. Like an airplane spin into an it's F5. The, it's the Love UFO, that bro. Shit, mate. He's, that, he's that in Ring of Honor. Love that shit. He should keep that, and he should do that all the time. Um, like I, I can take or leak, take or leave the the swing. I like, you know, it is what it is. People love it. I could, but for me, I can take it or leave it. But the airplane spin or the, the UFO is a, a that's some good shit. I love that. I thought it was a good fight, uh, a good match, and I thought. Um, I thought Seth Rollins gave Cesaro a lot as well. I thought he worked hard to make him look good. And uh, yeah, it was a good match. Cesaro with the win. Uh, but they better do some shit with Cesaro now. Now's the time. <laughs> hey, Sab, what, hey, Sab, what, what, what's Cesaro going to be doing on Friday? <laughs> He's going to be in catering <laughs> while Seth Rollins has 15 minutes promo time. To and talk a match. About. Yeah. <laughs> Seth Rollins will open SmackDown, do a 15 minute promo about losing to Cesaro. And then he'll be in the main event of SmackDown, <laughs> and Cesaro will be chasing the twenty four seven title. Talk yeah. Smack. Yeah. Fucking Jesus. I am. Um, I will. I wouldn't be against Cesaro challenging. Um, Roman. No, I wouldn't be against that. But or I also Apollo. wouldn't be. I think I'd have him cha- challenge Apollo. Yes, yeah. To freshen things up, and how mm. I'd have Big E challenge Roman. Just to freshen mm. things up a little bit, That's good because idea. also because I am, I I think Cesaro can really benefit from a. I think he'd have a really good feud with Apollo as well. I think they could have some bangers, um, and Big E versus Roman Reigns isn't a match that we've seen two hundred times either. So yeah, those two hey, would be where I was go. Bro, I I, I will wait. To do Biggie versus Roman in front of fans, like, did you hear that reaction yeah. Biggie got? Oh yeah, like, yeah. Bro, Big, I, bro, Big Biggie is over. Like, he is over, and, and Roman got booed. Like, but, but it was like it was like good booze. Like, hey, we yeah. hate you, we hate your character, yeah, not you. Yeah, it was heat. He got heat, which is good, which is a good thing. That's but, a good change in it, man. Bro, like, oh he my was goodness, bro. go away heat before. The, the the change is fucking drastic. Like, but Big mm. bro, Big E. People love people love Big E, bro. Everybody yeah. loves Big E. Like every, everybody wants Big E to like. Succeed. I'm telling, like if they gonna do that, match they're in this Roman. weird thing, though. And they're in a difficult position whereby, to me, they shouldn't. Roman shouldn't be dropping that title until next year's Mania versus either Brock or The Rock. So like, I don't know. Like, do you want to beat Big E? I suppose you could save it for in fan when there's fans there because you get more heat on Roman as well. And you make, you draw attention to the fact that Big E's getting such big reactions. 
So I can see the logic to it. But I can also see the logic to him, you know, going into the... Um, sorry, I got distracted by a big-ass pigeon just landed on my chair outside. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. massive. I feel like I should turn my camera around and show you just how big it is. It's huge. Um, yeah, I just... Like, Biggie deserves that main, main event slot. And I do agree with you to a certain extent. Maybe with the fans would be better, but you know, I don't want to see Biggie and Apollo again. As and we're prob- probably going to see that backlash, aren't we? So. Oh yeah, you know every match happening. But I, I yeah. but uh, but with Cesaro, has he ever he 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 won the U.S. title, right? But not yeah, the Intercontinental. Yeah. Kind of t- okay. So, yeah. yeah, I I think so. Like, you know what? I ain't gonna be mad at it. Like I, I'm happy for Apollo, but I ain't gonna be mad if Cesaro take the title off him. Yeah, I think so. I think that'd be good. That'd yeah. be good. Um, I'm saying about Seth Rollins gave Cesaro a lot. Um, New Day gave Omos a lot. Uh, they made him look like a million dollars in the, the old Raw tag team match. No, they uh, weren't they, even on Raw. They weren't even on Raw the next day. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, but this is the problem, isn't it? It's like they just... Oh, I can't even... Um, you know, as we expected it would be, AJ took all the heat and then almost with the hot tag uh, destroyed everyone. Um, but they made him look phenomenal. Um, I really liked the phenomenal forearm off uh, Omos's shoulders. I thought mm-hmm. that, was quite, uh, that was quite cool. And um, he picked up the victory when he hit Kofi with a double arm choke slam for the pin. But um, he didn't do a lot, did he, uh, almost? But he did. What he did do look fine, and they met, and the new day sold for him, um, like a really, really well. There was a point where he pushed, I think, like both of them down, and they both were like sat on the floor looking up at him, looking shocked. Mm-hmm. That was a good shot to make him look like a, you know, like a monster. Um, and in some ways, it reminded me. Do you remember when Braun Strowman debuted with the Wyatt family, and um. He mauled uh, Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns, and mm-hmm. there's, they did a similar shot where he like pushed both of them down, and they both kind of sat down and looking up at him, eyes wide. It was just like a, it's a good little shot, I suppose, to build the that monster character. Um, keep the titles on AJ and almost for a while. I, Bro, think, I don't even know, uh, but I don't even know where the fuck they go from here. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? Like, <laughs> How does... I, I suppose you, what you could do is build them up to beat everyone with almost doing that sort of, you know, being too big and too big, too big and too strong for everyone, and then they come up against Mace and Tivar or Dijakovic, like because those Viking two Raiders. guys are huge, or the Viking Raiders, yeah. Well, until they come up against some guys who are, you know, got a bit of a uh, bit of size and a bit of strength and stuff, I guess would be the way to go. But I'd probably ta- I would probably take the titles off them in a, in a month or two to one of those teams because you're limited in what you can do. And I, I, you know, AJ with Omos as his kind of bodyguard is he's a good heel that way. I think. Um, what did you make of the Shane McMahon versus Braun Strowman cage match? I, I did not, not give a this. shit. I didn't give. I didn't care when it was over. I didn't care when it started. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, Shane, bro, Shane, like, look, it, it's cool. You know, I, I appreciate him for you know putting putting his body on the line like that. 52. You know, the, the, like he he that's a that's an old man right there, bro. And he damn it, you know, kid like you know hurting Breaking himself like real, back. but you know what I'm saying like I, that that's not healthy at all. So you know, I, I I appreciate him doing that. You know, it was entertaining the fall, but I, I didn't really care about you know anything else but the fall. And then like you know. They, they, they didn't I mean it was Sh- Showman was in um the three way to determine the next challenge of the uh, uh that's who was the third guy yeah for, for uh you, yeah see look you, you forgot see that that's how unmemorable the shit was you just don't even don't care about it <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather they put him with the fiend yeah but um yeah I mean I, it was just you know whatever it was but, what it was I was happy mate that K that Shane took a bump into the cage and not out of the cage I will say that much um because I oh, was can worried. you imagine he hit the table. Oh my! God. That would have been. Well, mad. I was worried because I assumed the finish was going to be Strowman throwing Shane out the cage, and then Shane can sort of say, "Yeah, you're stupid," blah blah blah. But also, 
that maybe Strowman might throw him too far and he might hit the edge of the fucking table or some shit. I just didn't hey. want to see that. didn't want to see that and I'm glad that they went with a safer but hey, sir, you, hey bro, do you remember when do you remember when Strowman was like the hottest thing on Raw um, in twenty seventeen, bro? And then, do you know the one bit of this match which made me kind of kind of sad in a way was when Strowman ripped the cage. Like that was quite a unique thing and like you don't really see that. There's never I've never seen that before, where he rips the cage to get to Shane. Like that's clever, that's good. That's the sort of shit which got him over when he was tipping ambulances and pushing big rigs over and, and beating roman reigns ass. yeah beating <laughs> roman reigns i'm not finished with you bro, that, that's bro, all he, the shit he would bro like not even that, 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 that I, am i tripping bro he or he was like one of the hottest stars in the company bro. yeah he was like he People was loved over him beat bro roman reigns up and, and sad well, didn't you want him to see them win, see him win the universal title that year in 2017 i so, wanted I, him to beat brock i, thought, I, 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 I did too brock. i wanted him to beat him and, and now, brock, it brock beat him but like five minutes i was like what the yep. fuck i was like that's like the hottest Stupid. dude in the company like why would like if, if there was anybody that could have did it if it wasn't gonna be joe if it wasn't gonna be some more joe no, the next guy was don't, don't, you made me cry the, the, no brother they the done next, drove, they done joe dirty this week mate yeah don't but the, the, the next guy was Those Braun Strowman, bro yeah it was Braun. like and, and the thing was the thing that people were so confused is like you're getting the same kind of character. You got a monster yeah. transition the belt over to the monster character. Like it's like yeah. literally the same shit. Like Braun Strowman was like, it's, it's the book the same shit, bro. It's like, but Strowman was over. Like and it's, it's it's crazy how they missed the boat on this dude to the point where it don't seem like he'll ever get back to that point. Like he's just like you know big man a not big yeah. big that big man number five hundred that has come through WWE. Like there's not it like it, it yeah, it's kind it, but it, it's kind it's kind of sad for it, to be honest with you because like he was so over in 2017 and to see where he is now and how people just genuinely don't care about the Braun Strowman yeah. character in the slightest like it's I but I, I don't I don't think he'll ever ever get back to the point that he was well, in 2017. That's it. It's WWE's fault. It's not Braun Strowman's fault. It's WWE's right. fault for right. the way they've treated the character. But like to show how like less of a shit I really give like. I'd be happy if he went to being a supporting player on like the Firefly Funhouse and and like a back to like almost like part of the a new Wyatt family stadium stable with the Fiend and that if I would find that more interesting than what he's doing now, which is testament, I suppose, to how shit they've booked the character. Um, I just mentioned then Samoa Joe. They uh, they brought in a new commentary team on Raw this week. Who's the guy they brought in? Made from is it ESPN? Yeah, or nah, Sports he, Center or something. So, yeah, so the, he got. Um, I, I'm I'm not trying to make light of it, but he got uh, let go from ESPN because he was leaking source. He was leaking information to the media, uh-huh, and, and, I, and and I saw some tweets yesterday. People was like, wrestling people in wrestling media was like, all right, here we go. We got to <laughs> let's get <laughs> ready. We, 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 we got a source in, uh, in all, all hands on deck. <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, he he legitimately got uh, let go from ESPN because he was leaking information to the media. But uh, no, nah, he he's uh, I mean I, I've never heard of the dude. Like to be honest, I mean I've seen him on ESPN before, but I've never heard him like uh, do commentary. He's obviously well well accomplished. Or else he wouldn't be there. But yeah. um, yeah, it was. I mean he he his his first night. I mean it was his first night. I ain't gonna sit here and you know what I'm saying bash that dude like that because I'm pretty sure. If I was to ever do commentary, I'd probably be shit too on my first night, or like yeah. not, you, you know, just not ca- at the top yeah, of your game. Yeah, not at the top because like it's a it's pretty sure it's a lot of pressure, bro. So I ain't gonna sit here and you know what I'm saying. Smoke man in your ear. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. I, I ain't gonna sit here and be all you know jumping down that dude throat like that because I'm pretty sure you know that shit is probably. I'm pretty sure he got enough of that on social media, yeah. and I'm I'm, I'm I'm trying to be like not one of those people that's like like. You know, over like I mean, I, I criticize stuff, but like not overly talking shit about some of these people because I know some yeah. of you be having like mental issues and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to be. Yeah, I, yeah. I like I, I'm not trying to be one of those people that's contributing to that shit, bro. But I, I'll yeah. critique, I'll critique shit when it comes, but just not. You know what I'm saying? Be over, like overly w- with the shit, like talking about motherfuckers specifically, uh, unless they have done stupid shit. The way I just don't care. But you know, yeah, that that's not my whole thing. Like e- even with the um. I know we're gonna talk about it, but like even just with the Rhea Oscar match, like I, both of them, I thought they were fucking terrible. 
but I'm not like, you know what I'm saying? Like I've heard Rhea yeah. like openly do these interviews. She talked about like her, you know what I'm saying? Like she got like bad mental health, bro. And I'm I'm yeah. I'm not trying to, you know, like get, she yeah, but, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, vanity search her names and shit like that. And you know, I'm I'm not trying. I ain't I, 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 I don't, don't want no boss that. Shit, bro. Yeah, you you you, you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. They um so yeah, they brought this guy in and then they brought in they took Samoa Joe off Raw and Tom Phillips off Raw, brought this guy in and brought in Corey Graves with Byron Saxton. Um I gotta say, I really pissed off by that. However, it does give me a little bit of hope that maybe Samoa Joe is gonna turn up in the next couple of months and that's why they, they're taking him off TV so you forget about him and then he's just gonna turn up like he did at his debut when he choked out Seth Rollins, he just turned up. But they could also just keep him in catering and screw him over. Mm. So it is what it is. But then I don't really understand it unless they're gonna move him to SmackDown. But I would have thought they would have announced that before Friday. Like right. if they were changing the announced teams, it's, that's something that they'd announce, isn't it? They announced the Raw change, so they would have announced a change to SmackDown as well. So I thought Samoa Joe has done a great job on commentary. So yeah, I think, well, you, uh, you you think you think it's about to be Joe and um, Michael Cole? Mm, I don't know. I I got to be honest. I don't think it will be. I think it's going to be Michael Cole and, and Graves. Graves and I think Tom Phillips will be Michael Cole's replacement eventually. Um, mm, yeah, you're right. Go on. Samoa Joe versus Roman Reigns would be uh, a banger. Just <laughs> you, you remember that match at Backlash 2018? I don't know. Was it good? I was. <laughs> <laughs> match was ass. It was a, they right. they booed they booed but they booed the shit out of them. That that, that that was that match that um. That, that that was on the card when 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 uh when AJ and Shinsuke had the match when he low blowed him and then um yeah yeah that that and then uh it was the same one when Rollins and um uh Miz had that had that great match and then the rest of the card was just ass yeah I, I vaguely remember uh, all right let's go with Samoa Joe versus Bobby Lashley instead then That'll yeah do. we go there we go I'll do um the Miz John Morrison. Versus Bad Bunny and Damien Priest. Bad Bunny is a bad man. Jesus. Be, be, best of the. Uh, be, I saw people. T- hey, sad. I saw people. T- I saw people. T- I, saw people, t- I, saw people t- I saw people tweeting out. They were saying Bad Bunny for uh, 2021 Best of the Super Juniors. <laughs> 2021. Yeah. <laughs> you seen that? He's. Uh, he was. He, he was good, mate. Like, and he's got that natural charisma, which just means that he gets over a lot but we've seen some really good celebrity performances within wrestling in the last couple of years last few years i thought this was you know it was it was as good as you could possibly expect a celebrity to be for me like this guy i know he's been training and stuff but he is not a wrestler so to pull off some of the moves that he pulled off to 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 work the way he did you can't fault the guy, and uh, you know, I thought it was a really enjoyable match. Right, team won, and then Damian Priest lost on Raw the next night. His push mm-hmm. is done. He's gone. He's <laughs> done. Thanks for coming. Bad, bad Bunny for, went up. Thanks for the bad, promotion. Bad, bad Bunny went on tour. I mean, he he about to go on tour. He finished up. Bro, he, you know what, bro? I'm 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 gonna get I'm gonna get him credit for how they utilize Bad Bunny, bro, because he. That yeah, I, I don't I can't remember there being a week when I was like, all right, I'm tired of this dude. Yeah, like, they did well he, with him. They, they they did a good job with him, bro. And he delivered it in and in, in went when it mattered at the end. So like congratulations. And you got you gotta give credit to John Morrison and the Miz too. Yeah. Cause they they he probably wouldn't have been be able to do half the shit he did in that match if it wasn't for them. They and kept he, him but, interesting as well yes. over the weeks, mate. As yeah. well with their with the way they are and the way their work. And you know, I think people give Miz still a load of grief like i don't see how you can doubt the man's abilities and credentials yeah. not saying he's the best wrestler in the world no nah, but, nah, but. but he is consistently good at what he needs to be good at um 
and he has been for for a few years now, and he deserves a bit more respect. I think, bro. I can't I can't get myself to hate on the Miz, bro. Like especially knowing that he like the shit he went through early in his career, like getting yeah, yeah. you know hazed and shit all the time, and getting kicked out the fucking locker rooms consistently. Never you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He ain't quit, bro. Like, I, yeah. you, like, I like, I can't get myself to like hate on nobody like that. He made it, bro. He yeah. made it. He made and he's, it. He's like, made an incredible life for him and his wife and his family. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't. You like it, the dream, you, man. You, you can't. You can't. I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I ain't gonna say you can't, cause I mean, but I, I just can't get myself to like hate on nobody like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't hate on nobody, but like, I can't get myself to be like, oh, he, no. like, bro, he, he made it, bro. He yeah, made man. it. He, he wasn't supposed to. He really wasn't. Um, just very quickly before we go on to the main event. Oh, yeah, sorry, night I, one. I, I, I just wanted to ask you. I will ask quick. you about Ty Valkyrie. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Go on. Ah, uh, the the, oh, yeah, the the debut. It was it was you know it was eh. it, it, yeah. it was okay. I mean, it, it, it kind of it, it got role. it kind of got overshadowed like shit yeah. by by Rhea Bianca Belair. I kind of forgot that Ty even debuted after that happened. But they um, should have waited, shouldn't they? They, they, they should. They should have waited for that, bro. Like they could have just waited till next week, man. Bro, I, I, I literally like forgot that she debuted by the end because the Bian- Rhea Bianca thing was kind of cool, and I liked that a lot. That was that that that's some yeah. shit that that Raw or that, like main Raw the WWE wouldn't even contemplate thinking about. Like that was just. A but you know why else? Cool why thing. that's good, mate? It's because they've done it before with like the horse women and stuff. And what it shows is that their women's division is so deep, but mm-hmm. it's so good. But the NXT women's division works. Like, mm-hmm. uh, it does produce champions. Super, superstars and, and world champions. So you can't knock that. Um, and, you know, will this time next year we see Io, Io Shirai in the same mm. slot? I doubt it. But there we go. Um it- Hey, side what, note. What were you gonna say? No, it's, it's, I was about to say. Um, what, what, what the fuck was I about to say? What was I talking about? I didn't before? know. I, I I interrupted you with Tyre. Um, uh, gotta say I was something. About, I was yeah, just oh, about oh, to say oh, yeah, the main um, event. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think John Morrison should be rewarded with like a U.S. title run. Yeah. I, or, yeah, or a man. title match or something. Cause like, bro, cause like, I, I know a lot of people was crediting Bad Bunny for the. Destroyer, but John Morrison was the one that did yeah, the fucking John Morrison moves. does all the work yeah, in that move, doesn't he? He, 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 he does the I mean, it, 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 it Correct me if I'm wrong, just, mate. Doesn't Bad Bunny basically just hold on for the ride? Yeah, yeah. John, John Morrison, John Morrison is the, the one. That, he's the one that does the flip and makes sure that he lands. And Bad Bunny just basically just holds just, on. Yeah, he just like holds a on. To him. And I, <laughs> <laughs> just holds on to that. Quick, go. That's all it is, bro. But I, I think. Like I, I think that's the issue with WWE. I think they, like I, I'm pretty sure they they gave Morrison and Miz their props behind the scenes. But like I think it's a thing of like if, if I was running it, I, I would pretty I would probably try to give Morrison a U.S. title run, or I would g- or give a him good a good t- U.S. title feud, a, a feud, or you know what I'm saying, g- give him something that he can, you know, say just a thank you, you know what I'm saying, yeah. to show something he can sink his teeth into. Ex- mate, exactly, really, sort of. It's not just Miz's partner or right. like he can actually do something for him and he can and it can be something that he can really test himself and try things and get a bit of creativity and at the end of the day that's what so many of these guys want is creativity they're to 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 create and to try and come up with stuff and they just so often don't get the opportunity and i, I agree with you it'd be nice if he got the chance um the main event of night one sash banks versus bianca Belair. banger this was, this was shit man banger Gosh. Rubbish. I, Rubbish. I, will, I, will, I will leave this fucking uh, this <laughs> no, damn stream good. right now. This, this was it, fucking. Let, 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 let me kick this off, bro. Because this on. was you go, fucking bro. great. This was great. Like legit. This, this was. I, I've had this. I got this on my um. My, one of my fa- my my favorite matches. Of the, one of my favorite matches of the year list. Uh, yes. Like this was from from bro, from start to finish, bro. This was great. They had the perfect time for this match. Like it went smooth as hell it was no rest periods during this match they fucking killed it bianca and sasha did like the interests are great the moment before the match started was great when you could tell they emotional and you know recognize it is the first time the two black women headlined the wrestlemania for a title or headline wrestlemania period together that was some cool shit just to see and i know that probably inspired a bunch of 
young black children out there see that it's people that look like them on this stage that was great the in-ring stuff was, oh my bro when sasha came out when she did that cross body outside the ring and bianca dead lifted her ass up the steps and threw yeah. her in the ring i was like bro she is a different type of athlete different type of athlete like she is insane bro like for how strong and athletic she is she hit the 450 and like bro you 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 got to give credit to sasha banks because she you, you could tell she was kind of like the general like kind of leading yes. leading this match like she but she is so fucking good bro like she is legitimately might be the best women's wrestler in north america right now like she is unbelievably talented for and it, it, it was great to see that moment after the match they didn't show it on camera but so a fan caught it when she was smiling looking at bianca holding up the title while she was in the ring but sasha is legitimately i think she's the best women's wrestler in north america like she is insanely talented at what she does and she's only like 20 25 26 but i'm telling you bro wwe they better fucking get every single thing that they can get out of sasha banks over the next four years because i think by the time she turned 29 bro she's not gonna be wrestling anymore i think she's gonna be like in hollywood or like hosting or doing some other shit and she i think she'll still be in wwe but i think that she'll just be like you know part-time you know because yeah. I'm, I'm telling you bro like it's like they they better get every single thing that they can out of sasha banks over the next four years because i'm i'm telling you bro she's she, I, by the time like 2025 I, she's not gonna be full-time bro i'm telling you she's 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 not gonna be full-time yeah, I agree completely. And I, I put a tweet out on Monday morning when I was watching it. And I said, um, Sasha Banks is truly one of the greats of all time. Not the greatest female, just one of the greatest of all time. Her history of work speaks for herself. And I said, I also said, Bianca Belair is once in a lifetime talent. WWE, don't drop the ball. Historic main event, two world-class talents. And oh boy, did they deliver. Um and I think that sums it up, mate. It was incredible. It was awesome. And I just... It's so difficult, mate. When you're as mo emotional as they clearly were, I don't think people uh, realise or give enough credit to how difficult it is to compose yourself and then perform on that high of a level mm -hmm. for whatever it was, 12 minutes you know, intensely or whatever, 15 minutes, like, non-stop. And, you know, they were very, very clearly, uh, you know, emotional. Like, that was that was real. Mm -hmm. So to be able to compose yourself and then perform, not just compose yourself and go and do a match, to, to perform at that level, I think you really deserve, like, so much credit. And the um, bill was shit. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it isn't it the build was absolute garbage um it's that so how, how many times over the on the weekly enough did me and you say I, I remember you saying this specifically and i remember i said it a couple of times too like all they needed to do was just tell the like bianca and sasha would go out there and deliver they just needed to tell just a, a halfway fucking decent story and they the bianca bella and sasha oh fucking over delivered but the yeah. bill was shit and like we, we, i mean i know me and you kind of said it like by the time the match is over people are probably gonna forget about the bill they and you know that's the that's the case now but like they 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 they, they deliver bro like they should be oh, yeah. extremely proud i I, th I think this was the this is probably my match of the of the rest, two wrestle two two wrestlemania show because I, I didn't get a chance to watch some of the independent shows that weekend because i was uh swamped up in in news yeah. that i had to cover but uh yeah, the, I did. This was great. I was real, real quick side sidebar because me and you, we haven't done this in a long time where we just dive off into a random ass topic, bro. John Moxley confronted Nick Gage, bro. And he's going did to he? be talent. Yeah, yeah, he was uh, Nick Gage beat uh, Ricky Shane Page for the GCW world title. And uh, guess who but my, one, one John Moxley ran up on Nick Gage at the show and uh, gave him the death rider. And Moxley is going to be challenging Nick Gage in a death match. For the gcw world title bro moxley is living his fucking life post wwe yeah. this, bro this dude popped up at an independent show <laughs> and is gonna be wrestling nick gage for the gcw world title in a fucking death match i know renee is probably losing her shit, but yeah. this dude th this dude moxley bro like he is like you but you can tell he's just like he just loves like 
wrestling, bro. Like, but it it, it was like probably like 120 people outside. You know what I'm saying? But he was, yeah. He, but he was in it. Like, I just so I just seen the video of Sasha laughing by um, smiling. But mm-hmm. I also just watched uh, a gif of John Moxley giving Nick Gage a paradigm shift through yeah. some light tubes. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, that's going to be some good shit. And like, they, they going, I they bet going he is the shit out of each other. That, oh, yeah, oh yeah, you know it, you know it, you know he is, you know he loving it. He, he got to bro. Like, I, I mean, like, is AEW like really doing anything with? Like, I know he got written. Then he get written off when the Bucks super kept him. Yeah, I think yeah. So I mean, he, 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 he ain't got shit else. To, like, why not? Why not? Why not? You know, indeed, and, and, and then, hey, Sai, I don't know if you had a chance. I know you uh, you busy, but like, if you when you get some free time, bro, go watch that match that Moxley had with Josh Brown at that Blood Sport. Yeah, bro, I will, yeah. that was fucking great. Like, it was great. Like for real. But yeah, I'm I'm excited to see Mox and uh and Nick Gage. That's gonna be that's gonna be crazy. Yeah, it's um it's one of those really like uh, John Moxley doesn't need the money. Like he is made for life. His he's got a uh, guaranteed money in AEW. His wife is making good money doing everything that she's doing. Like he doesn't need the money, but he does it for just for the the love of it and the love mm-hmm. of the business. But um, I really, really, I I like it. I like yeah. it a lot. Um, night two. Um, has start. <laughs> don't start me don't yeah. start me look um i could talk about this for ages because there's various aspects to it what i will say is alexa came out turned the crank on the giant jack of the box the fiend's entrance was fucking phenomenal the crowd loved it the crowd loved the fiend the crowd was behind the fiend the crowd was like they popped for the fiend all all the way they every time he popped up and randy orton got him down and he popped back up again the crowd popped the crowd loved it the crowd cheered and then um so alexa comes out in funhouse attire to start with introduces bray and then she disappears and then just at, towards the end of the match when you think the fiend's going to finish him off and that would have been the perfect finish the fiend sister abigail great good start to the show five minute squash randy orton what we said should have happened but instead of that Alexa Bliss appears, um, and by the way, the special effects for her, the black goo, and she had like a, a rose, uh, like a crown of like barbed wire or something, and like all black goo coming down her face. She looked creepy, and it was really good stuff, but she distracted the Fiend, Randy Orton hit an RKO, and then they won, the Fiend pops back up straight after Randy Orton's got out of the ring, and they just kind of stare at each other before disappearing, and the crowd turned but the thing is the crowd loved it even when alexa turned up and she sat there cross-legged like alistair black with all this black shit coming down her face and a a crown of barbed wire crowd still loved it crowd only turned when the fiend lost again and this is my problem with the way they've treated bray wyatt every time he gets the crowd behind him and and he gets does anything he loses the big match he loses like this this dude this motherfucker went away for four months not like a couple of weeks four months he went away for after being set on fire by randy orton and he still didn't come back this is your monster supernatural character and this motherfucker doesn't come back and win Mm. fucking bullshit but apart from that um, you know, I mean, I'm interested where they'll take it and stuff, but I just felt like it was needless. It was like a swerve for the swerve's sake. It's the first time where the Fiend and the Alexa stuff, I felt like maybe like they've just done something for the sake of it. And the few reports I've seen about it says that right up until like Sunday morning, the Fiend was going over. And then the the finish got changed because whatever reason, probably just because they wanted to, to shock people. But that's not a good reason. Sometimes doing the obvious thing is okay because the obvious thing is the right thing to do. Does that make sense? 
it's part of the story and yeah it, it really pissed me off mate to god be honest but um, the special effects and the entrance and uh, everything up until the finish was good go on um you're gonna say the opposite to everything i just said I, I'm, I'm just not into it, but I haven't been into the Phoenix no, character, no, no. and I, I didn't like, I don't know how long, it's just not interesting to me at all, like, like, I mean, ever since, I would say I kind of got really burned off with the character when he lost to Goldberg, like, yeah. I was like, like, ever since then, I just been, like, checked out, like, for the most part, I I, I like the Fly or Five Funhouse thing at WrestleMania, I think that was cool, but, like, other than that, it was, like, you know, it, it's just, yeah. Like th this is like Bray Wyatt's career from like since he since he came up to the yep. uh, main roster, so it's like you know build him whatever. up just to beat him, and uh, that's what it comes down to. They that's what they do every time. This motherfucker's on like a five match WrestleMania losing streak. I think he should have beaten the Undertaker. He should have beaten Randy Orton last time. He should have beaten fucking everyone else. A bunch of tossers. Anyway. <laughs> It is what it is, mate. But it's, I find it frustrating. But, yeah, the problem is when you've got a monster character who the crowd loved, by the way, and then you have him lose to Goldberg for no fucking reason, but you can't expect the people to give a shit anymore then. And, that unfortunately, that's what's happened is a lot of people are in the same boat as you where they've kind of checked out on the character and it just doesn't interest them because... Everything which was interesting about the character kind of goes away when you lose to a 50-year-old doing a spear and a jackhammer. And there was no... If they were going to beat him and take the title off him and put it on Goldberg, we said this before, they should have beaten Funhouse Bray. And that wasn't... That wouldn't have been a problem. Where would the Fiend be then, is the question. Next up, Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler versus Tamina and Natalia. You mentioned Tamina, mate. She had a very good showing in this uh, in this one. Oh yeah, T Tamina. She did really good. I, I was like really happy for her. She's been in WWE for Lord knows how long, and really hasn't had a big moment. So yeah, this was a uh, just good for her, man. And um, yeah, congratulations to her on a on a good performance at a uh, at WrestleMania. Indeed, yeah, and uh, I was glad for that. Um, and then you had Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn with Logan Paul in the corner. Um, K, I could watch KO and Sami Zayn fight, bro. So it, just so that it. match, man. Oh my goodness, bro. That this, this was this was so like you know what the the one of the best things that I really liked about this was seeing how Aunt Sammy and KO were to be in front of crowds again. Yeah, like against each other as well. I think yeah. it helped, didn't it? Um, yeah, um, yeah, it was good. I no, um, you, no, one, one thing I wanted to mention, like I don't, like I saw uh, uh, John had mentioned this. John Pollock, he had said that uh, people were kind of underestimating the amount of like coverage that this match was getting in canada yeah. because you know cammy uh, sammy sammy i was about to say i said i'm about to say sammy in french sammy mm -hmm. and kevin are from uh they, they both from montreal right yeah quebec they both from, and bro they were getting coverage out of the ass like i'm talking about like it was ridiculous how much coverage that they got for this match like two can no two quebec boys and made it to the big stage you know what i'm saying like it's yeah, yeah. like like it was like massive like it, it's like how real ripley's kind of get like I, so i cannot tell you how many real ripley interviews i fucking say like, i'm kind of tired of seeing the shit now like sure. how many real ripley interviews i've seen since she won the championship bro like and i'm talking about just in australia like she haven't even had she yeah. hasn't even hit the u.s press yet like she's doing hella media for australia outlets and sammy and ko kind of the same thing so yeah but yeah this match is good uh, I really didn't see the point of Logan Paul being out there. I really didn't give a shit for him, but that was cool to see him take the stunner, I guess. So, I guess he can go on about his way gonna, now. Yeah, they're going to, like, he's got a, quite a big following. I can see yeah, the yeah. logic to it, I guess. But um, the one thing I will say, someone sent in a question. I forgot, I can't remember who it was. But um, they said, what was KO looking at well, before he stunned Logan Paul? He was looking at his wrist. Um I don't know, but hasn't he got a tattoo on his wrist of, uh, I think it says evil or something, or live. It's like evil and live backwards, like it's one of those type mirror images of a word. I don't know. Maybe he was looking at that. I don't know. I don't know. Do you know? I don't even know what you're what, what talking about. So he was, just before he, so like, when Sami Zayn leaves, and then... Um, Logan Paul raises his hand, did he? And then 
just before he stuns him. He's staring at his like his forearm right there, like on the inside of his forearm where I've got my tattoo. But and then um, it's weird, like because he's sort of staring at it for about ten seconds, and then he does the stunner. Um, mm. That was the only thing which I could think of when I saw that question was um, that he was looking at the evil thing. I don't know, fuck knows. Don't know. Sorry. Um, just before the Riddle Sheamus match, we got a Sheamus uh, a Riddle. Great Kali and Rob Van Dam segment. They gave us Riddle and uh, Van Dam together. RBD rolling papers. Yeah, boy. But um, Seamus and Riddle was pretty good. I thought I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, bro, this was good, bro. She- bro, sure, Seamus. What? I, 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 I'm not even bullshitting. Seamus has not had a bad match since January 2020. A lot yeah. of you that. But said, like literally since he came back, every match, every match he's had has been good. I don't know what the fuck has gotten into this dude or what, the, what what's going on in his life. He must be happy. <laughs> so, I don't know what the hell he's going on. Bro, but he's like, up. every match that he's had has been good. I remember even when he was doing that feud with Jeff Hardy, I was like, this match is about to be so ass. And yeah. it was good. I was yeah. like, okay. All right. And like everything he's doing has been really good. I think this like physical shame is like where he's just like not pulling no punches back, like beating the shit out of yeah. whoever he's in the ring with. Like this is like elite level Seamus right here and that that knee that he did the riddle uh, he oh my goodness bro i know he that shit hurt in. but he like he, he like he connected he laid it in like a shade of basil knee to natty on raw would knocked out her teeth or something that that's how that's how i'm gonna do you when i come to nxt uk take over yeah. carter and fucking uh give you the uh the, the the pump knee the big knee um, I would be quite happy to see Riddle versus Sheamus continue. That's the one of the feuds which I wouldn't actually mind continuing, just because I think um, I thought Sheamus' style brings. No, up no, no, sir. We need Keith Lee. Riddle. We need yeah, Keith it, Lee. Assuming Keith Lee's not going to come back, I wouldn't mind saying I wouldn't be against a three-way feud where the three of them just beat the shit out of each other, because um, that could that, be good that, too. That was supposed to happen in Elimination Chamber, right? Yeah, I think it was. It was it those three, or was it? Riddle, no, what, yeah, Keith it was those Lee, and Bobby Lashley. Yeah, 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 that's what it was. That's what it was. My bad, my bad. Um, Intercontinental Championship match. Um, I just want to say something about this. Big E got some incredible pops for this, really, and mm-hmm. I thought it was a really, really good match. Um, I didn't like the ending particularly with Daba Kato, and I didn't Who? see the did, did not see the point. Who? What's his name now? No, 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 I was obviously I was making a joke about how WWE oh, yeah, was yeah, saying. Yeah, don't know who it is, <laughs> I've never seen him before. <laughs> how many seven seven foot guys do you do you know? But um, I didn't see the point in this being a Nigerian drum fight match. They they was, don't even know what that shit is. They, 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 that they, they still don't know, do they? Like, do you know what I mean? It was just a no no, no disqualification match, and they just <laughs> drum drums around the side, like. Yeah, I don't know, it was fucking pointless. But um it was a good match though and um Big yeah. E's over. And um as much as I wanted Big E to win, I kinda did feel like Yeah, Apollo had to Apollo win. Apollo had to win. He had to. He'd he had been to, beaten bro. so many times. Um General Davocato or whatever shit they're gonna call him. G- didn't Gen- General Azim. Is that what his name is? It's like is it's is is a Z or Azim, one of the Commander Azim, I think. Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm interested to see where it's gonna go. Like, I, I think, I think it just give Apollo like more legs. You yeah. Know, just to, do you think they'll like, give him like a a full stable, like a couple yeah, of what, yeah, with Desmond with, to go with him? Probably with Desmond Troy, the dude who was with him the first time that was wearing okay. the camo. Probably them dudes. I think that'd be cool. Like, I, I think yeah. it just gives Apollo more, more legs to run with his current. Yeah. Uh, opposed to him just being solo and then you know getting boring and shit. Like, yeah. You know, it's. Yeah. It, it's you know it, i mean it's something like i you know i can appreciate the you know the effort like i think it's smart to put him with uh the the, the mystery man who has never appeared on wwe television before He's never so. been seen before he wasn't um, on raw underground five <laughs> months ago R- raw women's title rhea ripley defeated oscar this match was the, the new raw drizzling shits brother oh yeah, it goodness. was not good um which is like i saw i think it was jeremy lambert said on twitter on raw when they did the rematch Maybe these two just don't mix, like their styles don't mix, and sometimes you, you know, sometimes you just get that, like styles make fights and all that, and sometimes styles just don't mix, and maybe that's just it. 
Yeah, that, I mean, just don't mix well yeah, but that, because the raw match wasn't good either. Yeah, but that's all it is. They just don't have chemistry. Like, yeah. I, and, and then I that you don't have the live events because, like, if they had the road to WrestleMania live events, they would have had like five or six ter- opportunities to wrestle yeah, each they'd other. Yeah, they'd have been tag, and, t- tag and, team and, matches and and, 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 then, and then by the time they got to WrestleMania, they would have wrestled each other like seven times already. So you already know, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Sure. But like, it's just you know they, they just don't work. And you know, I I don't think it's a smart move. Uh, after the first, after the first, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure. It, I, I can see the thinking being, hey, maybe they just had a stinker on night. I mean, like WrestleMania, like yeah, give them a, give, give, give them another go. You know what I'm saying? But like, it's just, they they just don't it didn't work. They don't work. Like I, I think you, I think Rhea works better with the small, very athletic, you know, like yeah. jump jumpy type of wrestler. Yeah. Like like an EO, like I I think if Rhea were to face Io Shirai. I think yes. that'd be money. You know what I'm saying? Like if she were to face, yeah, uh, who, someone who, not so submission based yeah, and grappling based, like like Rhea versus Naomi would be good. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? She just needs like I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe, I mean, maybe it's just like you know, just Rhea and Oscar just don't you know yeah, they, they just, just don't, don't mix. just don't match, bro. It's all good. I mean, they oh, screwed, oh, oh, they've oh, screwed oh, Oscar over some chronic. I oh yeah, say. bro. Her, her 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 she has like had like one of the weirdest main roster runs i've ever seen in my life but then uh, hopefully uh real you know those two matches don't end up you know being the cloud over her head over the next couple months and then people end up souring on her but i i generally don't know who the hell she's gonna face at wrestlemania well, backlash looks like it's gonna be her versus charlotte versus oscar doesn't it oh yeah um, yeah yeah who's taking the pinch well, who do you think? Uh, Oscar. Oscar. <laughs> Oscar. <laughs> Don't think Charlotte's taking the pin. Don't think Rhea Ripley's taking the pin. Got to be honest, I wouldn't be against putting Oscar on SmackDown. I think she could have some good feuds with Sasha and and Bianca. And Send her back to NXT. Well, yeah, there's that too. I want to see her versus Io Shirai because I think that would be good mm. shit. Um, the main event of the evening didn't suffer with such chemistry problems. With Roman Reigns, uh, with Paul Heyman and Jey Uso taking on Daniel Bryan and Edge, um, I didn't think this match was great. Yeah, I thought it was good. It was all right. It was good. Um, you knew that the finish was going to be some sort of uh, interferency type thing. I think that was clear. I did like the um, Daniel Bryan and Edge spot where they both had Roman in a like a yes lock or a like arm bar type thing and, and they were headbutting each other while doing it. I thought that was quite clever. And there were some good spots and some bumps and stuff. I don't like that the the one man concerto concerto whatever it's called. Concerto. Um, yeah, I don't like that, I gotta be honest, but especially on Daniel Bryan and Edge who like one slight like just an inch the wrong way or too close to you and you could do some real damage. Um, so yeah, I'm not a massive fan of that. I hope they can put that to bed now. Do you think Edge stays around? Yeah, he seems to. Um, he seems to be loving it, doesn't he? So uh, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't be against seeing him and Daniel Bryan feud. For a yeah, bit. May, may, maybe they do the number one contender match at Great WrestleMania Backlash, and then the winner facing Roman at yeah, Money in the Bank. Possibly. Um, right to finish us off, mate. I want you to give me a prediction. Um, who is going to win the Money in the Bank briefcase? Put them in and women. Who's your yeah? So who's your early prediction? So what are we? Well, this is the the fourteenth of April. So we're a couple of months out from uh, Money in the Bank. I want you to tell me now on the fourteenth of April who you think is going to win the men's and women's Money in the Bank. Mm. So for look, looking at the current champions right now, with Roman and. Bobby Lashley or Drew McIntyre. Uh, I can say I think the winner for the Money in the Bank. Ah uh, uh, oh, man, I, I who like I was trying to figure out who would be good because bro, they like like once they put the Money in the Bank title, Money in the Bank briefcase on Otis, I don't know who the fuck like I, yeah. I, they, they they put that shit on anybody. They might put it on Corey Graves next. Well, do you know what's but, confusing about it, mate? Is that they so often have the winner lose repeatedly so it could be literally anyone like yeah they they like to beat the person so it could literally be ricochet he's gonna come from main event and uh 
and win the briefcase. Who would you like to see win it then? If you can't guess who they are going to put it on, who would you like to see win the briefcase for the men and the women? Oof. Uh, for, for, okay, so for the women, I would like to see... I would like to see a Hill Naomi win money in the bank. That's what I want to see. I would like to see Hill Naomi. Um, and for the... For the women, I would probably like to. Oh, matter of fact, you you want? I mean, I I think a good marketing thing would be to have Sasha Banks win money in the bank. I feel like you get like hella merch out of that. Like it's like so so fucking obvious. Like you know, Sasha Banks money in the bank. Like it's you you you, they 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 be printing money with that. But oh yeah, uh, yeah, I think a heel Naomi would be good for women's money in the bank, and uh, I think like more of a comedy thing could be Billy Kay, maybe. Yeah. Um, I'd go with I I'd go with Ding Dong ba- Bailey ooh, to win it. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Ba- Bailey versus Bianca Belair. That'd be a good yeah. one. Yeah, but and, you um, could also tease her going to Raw, you know, Raw or NXT as well. I think there's uh, I think that would be good, and I think that would be a good makeup for the way that they fucked her over. Hmm. And didn't I give her a match at WrestleMania after the glorious run she had as champion? So yeah, uh, she'd be my choice for the, for the men. Uh, but I I Slap like Jack. There you go, there you go. Shane Thorne, yeah. Mister Mister Mr. Mr. Money in the Bank. Let, 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 fact, let me you look know, at the roster real quick. Alistair uh, Black would be a good ooh, choice. Ooh, there you go. Bring him back with a bang. Have him just go around kicking every motherfucker. There you go. And then, um, yeah, and then just do it that way. Maybe uh, I can't I can't even like I'm looking at the roster right now. I can't Cesaro. Even, that could be uh, a yeah. Shot. I mean, yeah, that could be a and good. Have one. him keep it because what Wait. you could do with Cesaro is you could do, you could have him keep it until next WrestleMania, and if they can't get the Rock or Brock or whatever for Roman, you could do Cesaro versus Roman, with him cashing in ahead of time. Or oh, you, you know also what? Have him you know what's that? Or and challenge that champion as well. Biggie. Yeah, that's another good one. Biggie. Shot. Biggie money in the bank, and then you know, le- le- I-, I I I hate the baby face trope, but I I, I feel yeah. like with Biggie, I feel like with Biggie to work, you know, the whole I'm gonna challenge you on this day. Yeah, I- I- I'm-, I'm issuing a challenge at SummerSlam. You know what I'm saying in front of fans. Yeah, yeah. I think that I I, th- I think that'd be cool as shit. Like you know. Yeah, I could go with that. So you've gone with uh, Naomi and Biggie. Biggie, yeah. And I've gone with Bailey and Arista Black. There you go. What we'll do is we'll address that each week. We'll come back to it and see if our things changed right up to the money in the bank. But um, cool. A bit of a longer show today, mate. But we obviously had two nights of WrestleMania to talk about. Um, thank you for joining me as ever, mate. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, guys, subscribe to Andrew's YouTube channel, Andrew Thompson Interviews. Follow him on social media at ad thompson underscore underscore. Uh, subscribe to youtube.com slash ace podcast nation spreadeth the word about our wrestling series keeping it real we enjoy talking the graps we'll be back very soon with some more wrestling news roundups as it goes but a bit of a different show tonight mate because we uh, we haven't done one of these for a while where we uh, we review a show and, and fly around a bit it's been fun Spend Thank you time. for your time. I'm on my PayPal on time. Paul Heyman's got it. He's gonna, <laughs> he's, gonna pay you, he's gonna pay you. He's gonna pay you after the show. No, I'll joke that. That was fun, bro. It was a good time. Always a good time, my friend. You look after yourself. Thanks for watching. Thanks for downloading. We'll see you soon. Peace. Tady, keep it real.